Jensen. Well, we used to think the only people who worried about the end of the world were religious zealots. But today, with so much media everywhere, it's hard to escape thoughts of the apocalypse. Yeah, you think it's the person on the corner, right, saying it. With the big sign. Yeah, well, yep. we are joined now by journalist T. Krulos. Am I saying that right? Yes, yes. All right. Um, with this modern-day fascination, this modern fascination. It's his new book. It's called Apocalypse Any Day Now, Deep Underground with America's Doomsday Preppers. And I'm so fascinated. We are so excited. Both of us are like, man. You. I said, I'm like, you've got to be the greatest cocktail party guest <laughs> because not only this book, but you wrote one called Real Life Superheroes as well as Paranormal Investigators. You have a fascination with things that people are fascinated by. Yes, uh, I mean, I'm always intrigued by people that are kind of off the beaten path a little bit, um, maybe unusual, quir quirky, so. Do you subscribe to any of these beliefs yourself, or is it really truly a journalistic view? Uh, it's a journalistic view. I mean, I don't necessarily believe the same things they do, but I'm interested to hear more about yeah, it. Yeah, you're coming at it unbiased. So, yeah. right. so right. tell us about the, the journey with this book. You, you must have traveled a lot, met a lot of people who are saying the world is going to end, and, and how exactly are they saying it's going to end? What are the theories? Yeah. There's a lot of theories. I mean, biblical apocalypse is a pretty common one. Okay. Um, but, you know, something like a pandemic or a major natural disaster, large-scale terrorist attack, there's a lot of different things that could go badly. Um, I talk about that in the book. I also talk about climate change, um, artificial intelligence going out of control, stuff like that. Yeah, I found some of those things like crazy, like killer robots, oh. the Mayan apocalypse, the blood moon prophecies, yeah. nuclear war, Y2K, all these types of things that people have been into over the years. But you um, camped out with a zombie squad, is that true? Yes, uh, zombie squad. So they're a really cool group actually. Yeah. Um, they talk about how you would survive a zombie apocalypse and it's not because they believe an actual zombie apocalypse is going to happen. Right. But if you prepare for that, then you'll be prepared for other disasters, like a tsunami yeah, okay. or, or something a little more down to earth. You'll know how to handle it. So it's kind it of a fun self. exercise to think about how you would survive something like that. And you toured survival condos. What are those yes. like? Because this is where I picture people having stockpiled things yes. that could keep them safe. So um, the great thing was I got to travel and go to some really unique places. And the survivor, survival condos are in Kansas, and they're built in an old missile silo, actually. Mm -hmm. So it's like a 15-story condo unit, but it goes down into the ground. And I think I've heard of these. Yeah. I think are I've you, seen a special on these. Is that you in this these. picture with the, right. in front of one of those? Yeah, those are the doors. That's the entranceway. Six-ton wow. blast doors to get in. Um, and I think the really uh, interesting thing is not the condo units themselves. I mean, those are. But there's certain levels that have an indoor pool. There's a little <laughs> movie theater. There's even a Are convenience people store. Are living in there now? Um, people have bought all okay. the units oh, okay, and they can good. go there whenever they want to, okay. but they're not like really living in there. Is is part of the purchase of the condo a uh, transportation to the condo? No, you have to get there yourself. So. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, um, but anyway, one of the most interesting things in the condo building was they have a little convenience store in it, and it's not because the guy wants to make a few extra dollars. <laughs> it's because if you're trapped underneath the ground. Mm -hmm. You want to have a normal experience, right? Mm -hmm. So that recreates like yes. going to a store and pushing a shopping cart around. And wow! Oh my you know. goodness! How yeah. long could could these places uh, could you survive in this um, place? So the the survival condos are stocked up, and you can survive in there for five years. Five without. years! Yeah. Oh my gosh! Just in case there's no sun or, or yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, are people so. imagining that the Earth is barren and? Or you know, decimated by something yeah. like yeah. this, and there's no no half the population is wiped out, or more than half the population yeah. is wiped yeah. out. Yeah, I mean that's uh, the worst case scenario. So that's what they're trying to prepare for is the worst case scenario. Wow. What are people stockpiling? Weapons, food, things like napkins, toilet paper, water. Yeah, bottled water, water, water filters, um, tools, tools. You know. Okay. Well, what's one of the most unusual things you saw or you? experienced while writing this book? Um, well, and I think you have a picture of this too. I went to this event called Wasteland Weekend, which is right. held every year there out in the Mojave Desert. Okay. Um, and it's a four day festival and they, they almost build like this small village out of junk and car parts and stuff. And people dress like they're in a Mad Max movie. <laughs> and they just kind of pretend that the world has ended and they're partying <laughs> so they pretend out it's there ended, the but it really hasn't. Right, yeah. So it's a festival. So, yeah, it's kind of a post-apocalyptic themed festival. Wow. So a lot of people into this, do you think? Is this an American obsession? or? 
Um, World, worldly? It's, it's worldwide. I mean, it's definitely more of a popular obsession in America, okay. I think. And, uh, you know, it kind of dates back to even Cold War when uh, oh, people were taught yes. to hide underneath their desks. And duck and cover. Right, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. So it's Bomb kind of shelters, part of our identity, you know? Yeah. Well, what was some, one of the most difficult things in writing the book? You know, it, it actually, it's more of a fun topic than you would think. Like mm -hmm. learning survival skills is kind of fun. You get yeah. to learn how to tie knots and start fires and stuff like that. Um, but definitely, if you start reading about all these different ways the world can end, it starts to toll on you mentally. So I believe it. It can be, um, you know, a lot of times I would spend a lot of time researching this and then I would want to watch cartoons or something. <laughs> Light, <laughs> not, lighten up. Right, yeah, exactly. One thing I liked that, that you mentioned was, too, that you treated it with respect. Yes. Yeah. Um, you, know, you didn't like make fun or mock anybody. No, I, I, I really hate it when mm -hmm. people make fun of something that they don't understand. Yeah. I try to like try to figure out, you know, see what it's all about, you know, right. instead of making fun. Has a little bit of you become a doomsday prepper yourself now? You know, it, it kind of enters your mind and everywhere you go, you kind of think about, is this place going to be a good bunker <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm stuck here? <laughs> now you know where they're at. Right. You can at least knock. Remember me? I wrote that book. Yes. Let me in. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I can help. Oh, I love it. Here's a book signing you got going on. It's Friday the 12th at 7 o'clock. Um, Woodland Pattern Book Center in Milwaukee. You can find out more by going to his website. It's tkrulos.com. But again, the book, again, is Apocalypse Now. I love it. I'm so... Apocalypse any day now. Yes, any day now. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking it's now. I'm going to be a doomsday. Stay prepper easily. We're good. Easy. I got a little fire starter. I got those things already. So you're, you're one step ahead then. Need yeah. to add more. Thank you so much for being here, <laughs> thank too. You oh, thank much. you for having so me. So cool. I'm inviting you to my next cocktail party for oh, sure. Good.